Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, this is a slide you've probably seen before. I don't work for Salesforce. I'm not talking about any future stuff. So, you know, don't make your purchase decisions, blah, blah, blah. Don't base on anything I say. Uh, I guess this doesn't apply in here. Hopefully you can hear me. My name is Michael Claudner. I am a solo consultant. I work with nonprofits. I'm a member of the Salesforce MVP Hall of Fame, and something you might not know about me is that I'm an amateur photographer, and I'm going to use some of my photos to illustrate this session. So we're going to go on a journey together today. I'm going to start very briefly with an introduction to myself and my trailblazer journey. You may be surprised to learn, at my age, I did not study to be a Salesforce admin. I was going to be a foreign service officer. I was going to solve the Middle East peace crisis. That career didn't continue, and look how that worked out for them. Uh, I was then a stay-at-home dad for 10 years, and in my first job back in the work world, we needed CRM, we implemented this Salesforce thing, and uh, even though databases had sort of stalked me throughout my career and my volunteer life, I finally found one that made sense to me, and I asked some questions on the Sales Salesforce community, and I was just blown away by the generosity of the people in this community with their wisdom and their time, which sucked me in. I ended up with a full-time solo admin job. I started coming to events like Open Source Sprints and Dreamforce, and fast forward 11 years, and here I am, an independent consultant. Um, I also have a blog. Hopefully some of you are readers. Really? Only one? Oh, okay, a couple. Good, thank you. Um, freelikeapuppy.tech, where I talk about Salesforce, mostly in the nonprofit context, but my content is applicable to everyone, and that's what the stickers are from. So sticking with the animal theme, this is my first flock of chickens. That's um, Willow, Buffy, Gandalf, and Sauron. None of them are with us anymore, but we have a new flock of beautiful girls. OK, here's what we're here for, right? Design for user success. Build better lightning record pages. Our goal today, but your goal when you go back and are you know, working as an admin in your org, is to make Salesforce intuitive so that your users can be productive and hopefully, while you're at it, your users can have fun. We're going to have some fun today. I think bubbles are fun, always, in all contexts. I'm going to do today in a three parts. We're going to talk about the principles of composition, how we talk about art or design. Art exists for its own sake. Design is art with a purpose. I'm going to do a show and tell, so I'm going to show you some of my real record pages, and then I will talk about how I built them and how you can build them too. By the way, you do not need to take notes. You will see this slide again, so you don't need to grab this yet. I promise you'll see the inset bigger, so you'll get another chance, but whatever, you do what you want. Um, you don't need to take notes. Everything I mention, I will give you a link to in the end. Oh, good, I'm glad you're back for your laptop. OK, the principles of composition. So when we talk about art, there are seven elements that we usually talk about, particularly with visual art, although these apply you know, for all art forms. First of all, emphasis, meaning what is important in the piece of art, or in this case, design, like on the Salesforce page. Balance, that doesn't necessarily mean that everything is symmetrical, but elements are in balance with, other, with each other based on their importance. Contrast. So in terms of you know, visual art, we're usually talking about color and brightness. And this is one where we don't have to work on it too much, because I'm going to let the Salesforce Lightning Design System handle this for me, for the most part. Not always. But the beauty there is that SLDS is going to take care of being um, web content accessibility guideline compatible. The new Lightning visual branding that's coming will be even more WCAG compatible. So I'm glad I can hand this off. Repetition. I'm going to come back to this again and again. Get it? Um, <clears throat> so, But reusing design elements and design vocabulary helps your users stay oriented so they know how to do their work quickly and efficiently. Proportion our headers and body text and everything in proportion with each other. Again, mostly SLDS is going to take care of this for me, which is very handy. Movement. I'm going to come back to this again and again. So I'm mostly talking here about eye movement because we're talking about a visual medium, so how the eye moves throughout the page. And last but not least, white space, those areas of the design where there is nothing and so your user's eyes can rest and be at peace. 
seven elements that we're going to look at as I go through actual page layouts with you. So for example, I would say there's quite a bit of movement here. I would also say there's some repetition in the converging lines, emphasis as your eyes are drawn to that arch in the center, not a lot of white space. This one has a little bit more white space, right? Your eyes can rest. But there's repetition in the bridge stays, right? There's contrast and balance in the color of the bridge and the sky. There's movement, I would say, too, as your eye is drawn through. I could go on, but I won't. Now, let's talk about eye movement. I know what your eyes just did. They went straight to the eyes and the face of the dancer in the middle. It's not a magic trick. We were, you know, we all evolved to do that. We looked for faces. Now, I'm pretty sure I know what happens next, which is that after you started with his eyes in the middle, you start scanning out in a spiral guided by the repetition of the canes. You take in the rest of the photo and you come back for the focus in the middle of the picture. So let's think about all of this as we go through the pages. All right, now we're going to look at some real page layouts and apply these same kinds of analysis. Okay, this is a typical page of mine. Obviously, it's a contact page. My other objects look pretty much similar. I'm mostly going to end up showing you contact pages because we only have 20 minutes, um, but you'll get the idea. That's repetition in my design vocabulary, so as my users switch objects, they don't have to switch contexts. I'm showing you real uh, pages from real production orgs, but it's all dummy data, so relax, it's okay. So this is what users' eyes do when they view a page. They start in the upper left corner, they scan down, they hit the bottom of the window, they bounce up, and they work back to the left. We know this from research on how people view web pages, which, let's face it, Salesforce pages are web pages. Of course, this only applies if you read a left-to-right language. It's flipped, but anyway. So keep in mind that the eye goes this way. So I have designed the page with that in mind. You'll also notice I'm using a balanced page layout. I'm using the template that has the 50-50 split, which I will talk about in a few minutes, otherwise known as the header and two equal sections. I'm also starting already with repetition for consistency. So I have two tab components on this page, upper left, bottom right. Those tab components have always loaded to the leftmost tab. Every single page of mine loads to the leftmost tab. Yes, it drives me nuts that Salesforce's defaults do the opposite. Makes me crazy. So that's consistency. My users know if they want to switch tabs, they know which one they're on when the page first loads. The other thing I try to do is I'm going to try to put like fields in more or less like places. So uh, underneath the emoji there, there's a status field, like a stage on opportunity or case. I'm pretty much usually going to put my status or stage field in the upper right of the topmost section. I'm not 100% consistent on that. You can see here it's third down. And I'm not even sure I have a reason for that other than that was the Salesforce default for opportunities, and I sort of stuck with it over the years. But the point is, the consistency is helpful. I'm also trying to use real estate effectively here. Um, for example, this related list quick links component does not say at the top, Related list quick links, because who does that help? Just hit the little checkbox, it hides the header, and your users will figure out how to use it. Um, I, I do this because I don't want my users having to scroll. I think I'm, I was a little bit traumatized because in my first full-time Salesforce job, I and all my colleagues had 11-inch MacBook Airs. The screens were this tall, so scrolling was a thing I wanted to reduce as much as I could. The other thing I do to reduce scrolling is that I put as much as I can behind tabs. I'm taking fields off the page layout, if I can, and I'm putting them behind a tab, and the tabs are thematic. So instead of scrolling and looking for something, your users know one click, I'll find exactly what I need. And we'll look back there in a second. I'm sure some of you have been thinking, Michael, there is no white space on that page. You are right. I will give that to you. That is actually intentional. This page is meant to be information dense. It's meant to be information rich. This is essentially my contact dashboard. My users can go here and see everything they need to know about a student in pretty much one glance. So I'm giving up white space for functionality. Okay, last note. For all that this is custom, 
This is probably not that unfamiliar to any of you, and I don't think any of your users or my users, if they're used to this and then they go, when they go to Trailhead and they see default page layouts, they'll kind of know what's going on. They're not gonna be completely lost, and that's important. Okay, let's click on that earnings tab and see what I meant about putting thematic things behind. So we've clicked on the earnings tab. We have some white space. That's good. The focus has moved to that section just for earnings. We have three roll-up fields that tell you what you need to know about this student and their financial contributions. And of course, below those three roll-up fields, we have the one important related list that goes here. Let's now click into one of those financial contribution records. Okay, now things have changed. We're not on a contact page anymore. We're on a very different kind of object. It's a very simple object. It has, I don't know, maybe 12 fields, so the focus is there. And more importantly, I don't need tabs here. So I've put the details component directly on the page. No tabs, no more scroll, no extra vertical screen real estate. I've got the most important related list. It's on the right. It's the only related list in this case. It's on the right. It loads because it's the leftmost tab. My users also generally know that chatter is going to be on the right in its own tab, generally the rightmost tab, unless it's an object where they use it all the time. And also, I'm sure some of you noticed, there's some color on this page. That's fun, right? So you knew immediately when the page loaded, like, we're not in a calm state. We're in something yellow, like a traffic light. And there's also an emoji on that button. How many of you noticed that, right? The emoji on that button draws the eye, so it's part of the focus. That's what you need to do. So if you click that enter disbursement button and you tap, 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 you enter your disbursement information, boom, the record changes. We have dispersed the funds, it's turned green, we have a nice little checkbox, and all is right with the world. All of this is to say, your pages do not need to be boring. It's work, but it's not like drudgery, hopefully. Right? So let's get some color on the page. Let's use emoji. Let's make things fun. Hopefully this is not a boring picture, but it gives you a moment to just rest your mind. A little white space for an eye rest. Let's talk about how I built it. So I've done nothing fancy. We have 20 minutes. We have nine of them left. This is a very short session. I'm only focusing on lightning record pages, otherwise known as flexi pages. These same principles would apply to anything else you might design, whether it's a screen flow or a lightning web component or anything, but I'm focused here on lightning record pages, and I'm pretty much, except for the very last item there, going to talk about things you can do right out of the box. You could pull out your laptop right now and make these changes and improve your org. First, and most important, if you take nothing else away from this session, change your template. Click that change button and select the header and two equal regions. Why? The default two to one split, I hate it. Because on the right hand column, the related lists display as cards, which I guess makes them related piles of cards, I don't know, they're so unfunctional. If you go to the 50-50 split, you get lists. Lists are so functional, you can see a bunch of things, you can figure out what's going on, so make that change. And then pay attention to field placement. We've all worked with the page layout editor, but here's where I've done different things. So these fields on the right, pertinacity and attendance and punctuality, those are roll-up fields, the user is not directly editing them. So I've taken them off the page layout, and I've put them on the right where the eye goes after it bounces off the bottom of the window. So they're gonna draw your eye. They have emoji to draw your eye as well. And I've taken other fields off the page layout, and I've put them behind the tabs. Let me take a quick tangent here. I did not put them behind tabs using dynamic forms. I have not ad adopted dynamic forms yet. I understand if you want to, go for it. They're pretty cool. There are some gaps in features that have me, particularly me as a consultant, a little hesitant. The biggie is when you're working with that field picker and you've dragged things onto the page layout, there's no indication of which fields are actually there. I'm afraid I'm going to lose one. And if I'm switching from org to org, I'm going to also forget, like, this org's in dynamic pages and this one's not. It's a little... so. 
I've done this section on the right using what's sort of gently referred to as the related record hack. It is not a hack. It will not break anything. And I have a link in the resources to how to do it. It's quite easy to work with, and it will allow you to move fields wherever you want them. Well, palette cleanser, we'll go back to the main presentation. Okay. Probably the most powerful thing in the Lightning App Builder is conditional display. Okay? That's, so those banners on the right, like the banners you saw on the financial record page, those are done using something called the Lightning Messaging Utility from Salesforce Labs, which gives you those banners. Super cool. And all I've done for the change of color is I've conditionally displayed either the yellow one or the green one based on the value of the status field. Real simple, but a super powerful way to make the page change. You can conditionally display tabs now, which is very cool. You can conditionally display a whole tab set, so you don't need a different lightning record page for different record types. Very, very powerful. I've talked a lot about tabs and how I use them to draw the eye and reduce scrolling. I probably don't use accordions as much as I maybe should. They're super fun, the way they open vertically and close vertically. They're super nifty. Um, by the way, note, you can also, tabs too, you can put emoji in your tab names, which I think is super fun. So keep, keep accordions in mind as a design element. Screen flows. Okay, this is a traditional screen flow. It does exactly what you'd expect. The user interacts with it on the page. But this one is just a design element. The user, other than being able to click refresh, the user doesn't do anything here. All this does is it goes out and gets related records, and it mail merges the data together, and it's now a display element for related record data, and in this case, in a conversational style. So you can use screen flows as a design element on your page. And last but not least, I did say not everything's out of the box. So third-party components exist on the App Exchange. Many, many of them are free. I mentioned Lightning Messaging Utility from Salesforce Labs, probably my favorite, link in the resources. Lightning, uh, sorry, Salesforce Labs also has one called Launch Flow in Modal, which puts a button on the page that launches the flow in a modal. I mean, it's not brilliant. Um, but that's a great design element because you can put a button and then you can have the screen flow pop up that you've designed differently than putting it on the page. And shown here, these are buttons from AppSona document generation, which are how you launch the mail merge functionality to make a PDF. So, you know, you might have a package that installs some design elements you could use on your pages. There is a lot you can do with the Lightning App Builder. And I hope you will go and think about your pages, think about how your users are going to interact with them, and make them custom and efficient. Thank you, everyone, for coming to my session today. I truly say your feedback is a gift. I would love you to fill out the survey in the app so that I can hear how you appreciated the session and what you might want me to do differently. And as promised, all the resources are at that link or that URL. Um, please grab that. And thank you, and have a great rest of your Dreamforce.